A circular lamina has the triangular portion with vertices A, B and C removed. A, B and C lie on the circumference of the circle and B, C is a diameter. The coordinates of the vertices are A00, B018 and C240. Find the coordinates of the centre of gravity of the remaining lamina. So we want the centre of gravity of, of the green part, okay? That's the circle with the triangle removed. So the green part is obviously an irregular shape. Um, its centre of gravity might be somewhere around here. Okay, that would be the balance point of the green part. If we were to balance the, um, the green part at this point, this is the only point at which it would balance if we rested it on a pinhead. Okay, so rest the, the green part horizontally at the tip of a pinhead, it would balance at this point. So that means that the sum of the moments of the gravitational forces about this point would be zero. Okay, if this, this thing was balanced horizontally on a pinhead. Now, um, in previous videos, our system consisted of particles. Now, in this video, we have a lamina. So, we have infinitely many particles, if you like. Um, so, you know, we can imagine that this is in some horizontal plane. Okay, and the weight vectors are into the screen, like we saw in the last example. So, when we consider the gravitational force on a lamina, we imagine the forces on tiny little increments of the lamina. Each increment has mass dm. Okay, that's an infinitesimal amount of the lamina and uh, the weight of it will be the mass times g dm times g and that will be into the screen okay so we can't show it in on this picture well the idea is that if we were to sum the moments of all these infinitesimal masses or weights about the center of gravity we would get zero Okay, we would have infinitely many summations to do. It would be a problem involving integration, but we don't go into that here. Um, but that's what we actually do in theory. Okay, we take each tiny mass dm, get its weight, which is dm times g, get the moment of its weight about the center of gravity. We do that for all the mass increments dm. And if we do it for all of them about this point, we get zero. If this point is the center of gravity of uh, just the green part. Um, now, to find this point, we need to, to get the center of gravity of the triangle and the center of gravity of the entire system. That's the circle consisting of the green part and the blue triangle. Okay, so let's look at the triangular lamina. Well, to get the center of gravity, we would have to connect the corner of the triangle to the midpoint of the opposite side. So we bisect the opposite side. This line is called a median. The center of gravity lies on the median of the triangle. So what we do is we get a second median by drawing a line from B to the midpoint of the opposite side. So we make this length equal to this here. So if we connect these up, we have a second median. And where the two medians meet, we have the center of gravity of the triangle. Uh, if we drew in the third median, um, we would find that it passes through the center of gravity. Okay, the three median medians are concurrent. This point is called the centroid of a triangle. It's the center of gravity of the triangle. Okay, so it's the balance point. So um, the moment of the forces, or the weight of each infinitesimal amount of this triangle about this point is zero. The sum of the moments of you know each tiny mass of the triangle about this point is zero. It's also the balance point. That means it's the balance point. So if we could take this triangle and place a pin at this point, we could balance the triangle at this point. Okay, all the moments all around would sum to zero. Alright, so um I just clear this diagram. Now, if we have the coordinates of the corners of the triangle, we can find that point very easily. So I'll just tidy this up. We just get the mean of the x values of the corners and the mean of the y values of the corners. So let's do that. Well, let's add up the x values. So we have 0 plus 0 plus 24. 
and we divide by 3 and add up the y value is 18 plus 0 plus 0 is 18. So um, that's going to give us 8 comma 6. By the way, when we discuss laminas in these problems, we are assuming that the weight or mass is uniformly distributed throughout the lam lamina. So for example, in this triangle, you know, if we take this portion here and this portion over here that have the same area, then the mass of these portions are the same. Okay, so that's what we mean by a uniform lamina. The mass or weight is evenly distributed throughout the lamina. And the thickness is negligible. So we're dealing with what is essentially a two-dimensional object. We can ignore its thickness. Now let's consider the center of gravity of the entire circle. So we cannot get the center of gravity of the green part directly, okay, because it's not a regular shape. But we can easily get the center of gravity of the circle. Um, that's just the center of the circle. It's very easy to see that it must be the center of the circle. If it's a uniform lamina, then um, the sum of the moments of each, uh, of the weight of each piece of the lamina of the circle about this point is going to be zero. Okay, so the center of the circle would be the balance point. If we balance the circle on a pinhead, we would balance it at the center. So what is the center of the circle? Well, it's just the midpoint of BC. BC is the diameter. Um, okay, we're given that as a diameter. But even if we weren't given that BC as a diameter, we could still realize that it is from the fact that this is a right angle triangle, okay? See, this line is a horizontal line. The Y values of the, these points are the same. This line here is a vertical line because the X values of A and B are the same. X values are both zero. So we have a right angle triangle inside a circle. Okay, the, uh, we circle drawn through the three corners of it. When that happens, the longest side is the diameter. So that's always the case. We have what's called um, the angle in the semicircle. The angle in the semicircle is a right angle. Anyway, we just have to get the midpoint of the diameter, and that's easy. We just get the mean of the x values. So 0 plus 24 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And we get the mean of the y values. 18 plus 0 is 18. Uh, 18 divided by 2 is 9. Actually, we have 12 comma 9 here. The mean of 0 and 24 is 12. The mean of 18 and 0 is 9. Okay, so we have the center of gravity of the triangular part and the entire system, which is the circle. The entire system before the triangle has been removed. That's 12, 9. Let x, y be the center of gravity of the green part. Okay, we have to determine what that is. Um, now, to do that, we have to get the force acting at each of these two points. So the force acting at the point 8, 6 is the resultant force on the triangular lamina. So that's the weight of the triangular lamina. So how do we get the weight of the triangular lamina? Well, we get the area of it. It's a right angle triangle, so we have half the base, which is 24, by the height, which is 18. That gives us 216 meters squared, assuming that these units are in meters. Well, they don't have to be, actually. They could be in any unit, but we'll just say they're in meters. Okay, that's the area. And we can see that the area is obviously proportional to the weight. We have a uniform lamina. So if we double the area of the lamina, we double the weight of the lamina. So the weight is going to be 216 times some constant. We can call that constant K. So this is the weight in newtons. K is the weight of one square meter. So this would be the weight of a square meter. So the weight of 216 square meters is obviously 216 times K. So 216k would be the resultant gravitational force on the triangular lamina. And uh, the line of action of that resultant force is perpendicular to the screen. It's into the screen at the point 8, 6. Now, in this, in this type of problem, you know, if we actually work with this here, we will find that the k's will just cancel out, okay, when we equate the sum of the moments to the moment of the sum, the k's will cancel out. So we can ignore that k. So we can just take the area for the weight. So we can just work with this and we don't have to worry about multiplying by the constant. So now let's get on to the circle. Um, what's the area of the circle? The, that's what we will use for the weight of the circle. 
Well, the area is just pi r squared. Now, what's the radius of the circle? Well, the radius of the circle is actually 15. Okay, you can easily work that out because we have a right angle triangle here. This is 24, this is 18. So the hypotenuse is the square root of the sum of the squares of the two short sides. If you do this calculation, you will get 30 meters. And half of 30 is 15. So that's the radius of the circle. Okay, now we are ready to get the center of gravity of the green part. Now we use this very important fact. The center of gravity of the entire system, now the entire system in this case is the circle. Okay, center of gravity of the entire system is 12.9. That's equal to the center of gravity of the center of gravities of the component systems. So the entire system, the circle, is made up of two component systems, the blue triangle and the green bit that's remaining. So, um, 12,9 is the center of gravity of the center of gravities of the triangle and the green part. So we want the center of gravities of these two center of gravities. Okay? So the center of gravities the center of gravity of these two center of gravities is the center of gravity of the entire system. Now that's quite easy to prove, but we won't bother proving it here. Okay, so how do we get the center of gravity of the points 8, 6 and xy? Well, we need the forces acting at these points. Well, we saw that that's equal to the weight, which is proportional to the area. Okay, so we have a vector of magnitude 216 pointing into the screen at the point 8,6, and a vector of magnitude 706.86 pointing into the screen at the point 12,9. Okay, so uh, we get the sum of the moments of the forces at 8,6 and xy about the x-axis. So this line here is part of the x-axis, okay? Here's the origin, 0, 0. 24, 0 is a point on the x-axis because the y-value is 0. So we need the perpendicular distances of the line of action of the forces at 8, 6 and x, y from the x-axis. So we need this distance here. Well, that's just the uh, y-value of this point, which is 6. And what about this distance here? Well, it's the y-value of this point, which is obviously y. All right, so we have to multiply uh, 6 by uh, the weight of the triangular lamina, which is proportional to the area. So 6 times 216. And we have to add on to that the moment of the weight of the green part about the x-axis. Now, what's the weight of the green part? Now, we didn't actually write that down yet, but that's just the weight of the circle, minus the weight of the triangle, which is proportional to the area of the circle minus the area of the triangle. So we get 706.86 minus the area of the triangle 216, that's 490.86. So we have, so we use this for the weight. Well, it's actually the area, but it's proportional to the weight. We multiply this by y. So this is the sum of the moments of the area or weight vectors of the blue and green parts about the x-axis. And that's equal to um, the moment of the sum about the x-axis. Well, what's the sum of the two weight vectors at the point 8, 6 and the point x, y? Well, that's just the weight of the entire system, the weight of the circle, which is proportional to the area of the circle, 706.86 meters squared. And where does this act? Well, we know what at the center of gravity of these two centers of gravity, 8, 6, and x, y, is 12,9. So it acts at this point, and we want the moment of this point about the x-axis. Well, we multiply um, 706.86 by 9. Okay, the perpendicular distance of the resultant force to the x-axis is 9 meters. Okay, so we got the sum of the moments of the two centers of gravity about the x-axis, and that's equal to the moment of the sum about the x-axis. So, um, so the sum of the two weight vectors is the weight of the entire system, which is seven, the weight of the circle, which is proportional to the area of the circle, 706.86, and that resultant force occurs at the point 12,9, because 12,9 is the center of gravity of the point the forces at x, y, and 8, 6. So you can see that we can solve this equation for y. 
It's a simple linear equation in y. If you do that, you get y equals 10.32. Okay, now we want the x value of this point. Well, as you can guess, we take moments about the y-axis. Okay, so we want the center of gravity of these two points. Um, so let's start with this point here. So the perpendicular distance of the weight vector at this point from the y-axis is x. Okay, this vertical line is the y-axis. So we multiply x by the weight vector at this point, which is proportional to the area of the green region, 490.86. This is multiplied by x. We do the same for this point here. The weight vector at this point is proportional to the area of the blue region. That's the triangle, 216. And that's got to be multiplied by the perpendicular distance of the weight vector here from the y-axis, which is 8. So that's the sum of the moments. And that must equal the moment of the sum. So um, the sum of the forces at this 8, 6 and this point up here is at this point here. It's proportional to the area, which is 706.86. And uh, we have to multiply that by perpendicular distance of the line of action of the force here to the y-axis, which is 12. So here we have an equation and one unknown, so we can solve for x. So if you solve that equation, you get 13.76. If you plot these points more accurately, you will see that these three points lie on a straight line. 